What is happening, y'all? Welcome. I'm back. So I have a fine selection of weapons to choose from today. Uh, we are bringing along the Smelter Sword, which is a pretty solid choice. Ranking in at a whopping 1260 attack power. Quite excited for that one. Uh, the Crypt Black Sword, 1147, fully upgraded. Obviously, a decent amount of dark there. The Dragon Great Sword, up at 1108, just pure raw strength on this bad boy. Uh, the Dozer Axe, a respectable 1060, and it has uh, Warcry built in, which should be pretty crazy on that. And then we have our standards. Uh, now, before we get going, I do, just because I'm curious, I want to see. So with Warcry, this thing comes in at 1238. And can we Lightning Blade, or is that going to replace it? It will. So 1238... Just, just curious on some numbers here. Wow, so it's basically on par with the Blunt Dragon Slayer Great Axe when it also has lightning on it. That's pretty impressive. Um, I think we're gonna go with the Smelter Sword though. This is a, a fun weapon to use. Very, um, very aggressive weapon. Very, you know, we're gonna actually need a little bit of a vitality there. And then we'll uh, sacrifice some of those new souls we got. Actually, I'm, I'm terrible at using cheat engine, so what I did was I, uh, I uh, basically added in souls and then went here <laughs> and I forged the items because I couldn't figure out how to just add more of an item, which is uh, pretty bad. But, you know, at this point in the playthrough, it's like, eh, this is all for shits and giggles anyway. So anyway, we'll stop at 150. I think leveling um, beyond that is kind of silly. The only reason we're really stacking vitality at this point. Um, some of these weapons are pretty heavy. The Dragon Great Sword, for example, is 20 weight units, which I don't even know. Yeah, 71.5, for example. So that one will have to probably drop something off. Are you still... Uh, okay, no, with that on, we can hit it. Okay, excellent. So anyway, we're going to use the Smelter Sword for a bit. We'll see how, how that goes. Um, I wonder if the, the color, I remember this having like color scheme flares up with it, but that might be after I start attacking stuff with it. Like after I use the ability. I, uh, oh, Envoy Banner. I was like, I don't remember this at all. But yeah, the Envoy Banner, and then that's right, it takes me over to this thing, where we are going to be against a army of uh, deadly archers. So that's always fun. Which actually, you know what? I bet my Havel Shield tactic would probably work really well here as well. Hot dust. Yes. yes. I have. Why else give rest? We'll see how the rolling approach goes first. See, these, this area isn't nearly as bad as the, the angels. Just because you know, we have spots we can hide. Forward to transform, follow with strong attack to launch flame. Okay.
So, lunge into regular attack does nothing. Except for light it up. Lunge into heavy. Kinda, kinda weak. Uh, 1340 though, and is that with or without lightning blade? I think lightning blade gets overwritten on it. 1290, let's see. Yes, okay, so lightning blade gets completely overwritten by me adding fire into it, which I think fire actually works pretty well on quite a few things around here, so that should be uh, should be an excellent choice for a weapon this episode. I think a lot of these um, kind of black squiggly undead guys are weak to fire. And isn't there something like right here? Or is it just the budding blossom that I grabbed already? Remember, there's something down here too, isn't there? We got here. What do we have. Ah, here we go. Hidden blessing. Ah, do 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 do. Um. Way. Oh, it's over here. See, I'm like, I know it's around here. It's been a while. Many of us are by the fire. For sake, I behold, fear not. I've always found it interesting how these skinny little dudes are able to stagger you by just pushing. Like that. Like, really? You you break all the laws of poise. That, that little push should not do anything to me. But here we are. Oh, look at that! That is inaccurate. And wow, that does some serious damage. A lot of damage. Like a lot, a lot of damage. I think where I'm at, any of the any of the souls I get, I think I'm just gonna spend on items, cause where we at? Yeah, I don't really see a need for any other stats. Oh, oh, to my search, and to your duty, and to, to my search. Actually, and wax face. Let's put the sign that has a shitload of curse resist on it. So now any of the the curse ones I encounter. Yeah, this is perfect. I can I can sit under this guy for like a solid thirty seconds without worrying about curse. They're one of the only things that I consider a threat. I was actually considering other covenants, but to be honest, I think Glaive Master Hoder. <laughs> Look at this fucking clown. I have a glaive and another glaive on my back. I will do a glaive. You have a cursed glaive. Yeah, we'll get. Whoa, my god, my health. Oh my god, Hoder, no. Hoder is not fucking around, dude. God damn. What was that? Oh my god, was that? Elden Ring. Wow. 
Wow, the ring used by the esteemed glaive master Hoder. It is said that he once resided within Stonehaven Sanctuary, where he honed his mastery of the glaive. Boost physical attack by 7.5. So it appears you made a glaive mistake. Oh my god. A glaive mistake. There's, um... <laughs> oh, I like that a lot. I am, I am in that age bracket where puns are way, way funnier than they have any right to be. And, um, I'm a big fan of Blade Mistakes. Not fucking around here. Listen, bro, my sword is just like a beefier version of your sword. Goddamn ring knights. They were a really cool enemy, though. I give them that. So direct hit with that, we're doing 2,500 damage. That's it's pretty intense. Man, it'd be cool if we could get that spell. Like, I don't even know what it would be. Just like a uh, ring of faith or something. Create a ring under the enemy where they rapidly lose health. That's one way to kill a ring knight. Best way. I should be able to like put the smelter sword in that thing and it actually unlocks them and makes them not evil like it's a keyblade or something Speak with thy father now's not forgotten I am known as Shira they who attend to God's name nope stop sir sir stop this bullshit I'm sorry, what were you saying? Thou a kind heart. Speak to a captive, so it is no surprise. May I ask thee, perhaps thou hast beheld the lone dragon that inhabiteth this city? Medea is his name. And the arch he once railed against the dark, who was to watch over the sleeping princess. And yet, before the dark consumeth him, I offer my sincerest gratitude, thou who art ken to God's name. Please. Take this. Sacred Chime of Philanor. I beg of thee. Don't worry, I'll put the great dragon to rest, lady. Well, this curse head is working out very very nicely for this portion. Oh shit! Oh 
hell did you come from, Beefy Jim? Masterfully played. You could say he was masterfully baited. <laughs> yeah, I'm not over there. You might want to... Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go under that and you can die. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Dragonhand. Honestly, you know, I would bet with this strength build I could probably do some silly-ass damage with those shields. Like the big one, how it has a, uh, like, a dragon walk, which is like, brong. Probably does really well. Witch gear. I really hope there's more invaders. I really liked uh, Glaive Master Hoder. I think all in all, like whole DLC considered, I think that's probably the thing I've enjoyed the most. Is I think he did a really good job adding like themed invaders throughout. You know, you had you had some that were um, very much kind of nods to previous iterations in the series with, like, the whole the giant dad, the mother, the child. Uh, you had some that were just based around a central theme, like Glaive Guy. And, you know, all in all, they were just... Like, I can't think of an invasion... Like, I mean, like, to be fair, a lot of these invasions, I annihilated them instantly, as is expected of, like, the beefiest of strength builds. But they didn't make them any less enjoyable. Like, just the, the central theme of them all having, you know, it, it was never just like some random jerk off that you were fighting. There was always something like fun or interesting about pretty much every one of those fights. And, uh, okay, I thought the game was freezing for a second. Oh my God, it kind of is. But yeah, that's, that's, I don't know. It's just nice. It's something that like really makes you appreciate it, you know, because he could have just like shoved random dickhead invaders that nobody cares about into the game. But instead, we got these, like, you know, like, like, a Recticus? Like, I don't know. Right, I guess when I think of the invaders that I've fought throughout this journey, it makes me feel like a bunch of friends that liked Dark Souls all got together over a couple of beers and just came up with a bunch of ideas. And some of them were, like, serious ideas, like... You know, the, the whole fight with the, the father, the father, the child, and the mother. And then some were just goofy-ass ideas. Like, yeah, we totally need a guy with a big BB lance called Erecticus. And uh, I feel I feel like we're all put into it. And that's what really matters here. This is the exact portion I wore this hat for. Thank you, Mask. In my life. Actually, I think there's like one more out here. Let me keep it on. Oh, you waited too long on that sword. Thank you for the slab. Thank you for the spear. You gotta stop. Man, they are. <laughs> they very much are relentless. One, build the feast. And let the feast begin. Yes, I know. That's your whole motto. All right. Um. So they're all done. I think this part's good. I can go up there later. So I think all that's left is to go down into the swamp. Let me uh, swap. I think we're past all those. Well, there could be more, but if uh, if we encounter more, I will go into to panic rolling when it comes to that. And up we go. Oh, you missed that. I gotta say, Smelter Sword, really liking this. Not just because of the fact that it's super, super powerful, and I'm a fan of weapons that are super, super powerful, but 
you know, when I think of the smelter, and I think, um, I think a lot of people would agree with this, the smelter is a boss that gave a lot of people trouble. You know, whether it was because you had to go through the bullshit that was uh, the Iron Keep before reaching him, or if it was just because he had a shit ton of damage. Like, either way, the smelter, when I think back to the smelter, I think that he was a boss that very much was like a skill check for a lot of people. After all, he's considered optional, but you found him and you felt obligated to take him on. And as if that wasn't enough, late in the game, you would have the, uh, the blue oh, smelter, which was just a whole new level of bullshit because it was like a similar move set, but you know, a couple of his, a couple of his things had changed. Um, you know, he had a couple of delays on moves that you didn't really expect. Oh my god, you just got wamboed, my dude. Makoto. No rumor Katana mentioned in folklore. Me with the deadly curse. Neato. But, so, you know, I think that uh, the whole, that whole encounter, um, you know, you get them done and then, you know, you, you expect that after an encounter that has that much intensity, that you would have a weapon that is also like a top tier, like, holy shit, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to stack up against this guy, you know, and you, I don't know, I feel like when you beat a boss that's like super overwhelming, you kind of expect like a really badass weapon to come out of it as well, like a deer, the katana you get from a deer, fucking top tier. Uh, Nameless King, you get his Sun Spear thing, which is ridiculously strong. Um, Soul of Cinder, most of his weapons end up being dookie because of how late he is. But the point still stands. I think Cinder, or not Cinder, um, Smelter is a boss that when he's overcome, you know, I feel like you should get a, a beefy reward for that. And the Smelter Sword is cool, but I think back in Dark Souls 2, for the most part, it was, it was like a gimmick, you know? Um, I liked using double smelter swords for the, the, the fire slam, but beyond that, you really didn't see it used all that much just because split damage in general wasn't very good. Um, and then on top of that, there were just, there were better options for damage, whether it was fire, physical, or combination of both. And here, this thing is actually completely clapping cheeks. And so I think that's a, it's a good testament to the type of power I think the smelter sword should have. I feel like I could write fucking essays on this stuff. Make it a college course. Solonomics 101. And I remember one time there was a... I invaded somebody, and they were standing right here, but they were disguised as a plane. Oh, man. I legit ran around for... Uh, I don't even know. It had to be 30 to 45 minutes trying to find this fucking guy. Incredibly frustrating. But at the same time, you know, you got to give give credit where it's due. And that was some of the best goddamn hiding I have ever seen. Maybe he wasn't a tree. I don't know. I just remember we finally found him there, and he had uh, he had transformed into something, and it was something that was environmental that blended right in. But I don't know if you can turn into a tree. I don't know if that's part of the uh, the potential turn-ins. A lot of these guys added around. A lot of baby locusts added around. You're in my way. That's gonna be extra annoying. Let's see if the bonfire's here, though. Wrap this part up, and yes, it is, which I'm fine with. Is, is this a one-way door? It's a one-way door. Anyway, closing this one on out. Um, yeah, Smelter Sword's been fun. Um, next episode, we'll, we'll probably switch to something else, but, you know, there's no reason I can't pull out any of the weapons that I've previously visited, so... Um, but we'll put this one away for now. I do want to keep rotating weapons just for the hell of doing that. And I will catch you guys tomorrow with more.